we are living in year 2021, so how has Destruction as a band been doing for the last one year and a half? Yeah, we're, we've been in, in the lucky position that we could do a little bit of something, you know, we toured a little bit with the last album. Uh, our tour stopped when the pandemic came, so we had to cancel the last show in Italy, when Italy really got bad. And uh, and then after that, uh, we did some pandemic shows last year. So, uh, we did. We really tried to play when when it was possible to do like social distancing shows. Also, we did a live stream that came out now on on or comes out now as Blu-ray. So for me, it was important to stay connected with the fans to to do something. Also, we did a, a live album last year, a very spontaneous live record uh, with Born to Thrash. Uh, because I thought if we sit home and do nothing, uh, it would not be good for us. You know, it's, uh, it was difficult enough already, but uh, the live shows really gave, gave us some energy, some hope, some connection with the fans also. Um, as a musician, it's, it's, a, it's a huge curse, you know, that you can't travel, you can't play, you can't do your job. It's, it's not just a little cut down, it, it's your whole life is different, you know. So, so that's, there's been a lot of, you know, difficult moments, but in the end, we managed to to get through. And uh, with the help of you know the modern media, social media, it was kind of cool to stay connected with the fans. Uh, that really helped us to to not go crazy. Yeah, you already uh, kind of mentioned the live attack uh, Blu-ray that's coming out in August, and it was originally a streaming event. So uh, first of all, what kind of uh, experience? Uh, was a streaming gig for you? It was, first of all, so much work because everything you have to do yourself, the whole organization, and uh, you need a streaming provider, you need uh, nine cameras, somebody cuts all that stuff, somebody that sends it out, somebody does the live sound and cuts the live sound and mixes it, and uh, you need a venue that is good, at a great stage, great setup. You, you know, the costs are so high for one single shitty show, that you don't know if you're gonna make it or break it even. Uh, so I learned that the streaming is pain in the ass work. It's so much work. And uh, we wanted to do it because the fans were asking for it. And it was a good chance to connect with the fans and start this year with like a bang, basically. Uh, in the end, I'm very happy we can bring it out as a DVD or Blu-ray right now because uh, uh, I think it turned out really well at the end. It was a, it's a big set list and uh, and the fans really liked it. But would I do it again? I'm not sure. So it's uh, it's also you know when you play a show like this and there's no feedback. You know, of course you have the internet that people react in in the, in the net and it's kind of cool. But it's not the same the same vibe as a real live show. You know, the the energy that you have from a live show really carries you on and uh, and and this was like playing in front of an empty room this it's kind of a weird situation that's uh, kind of the musician side of it but have you been able to enjoy other bands streaming gigs or what is your like uh, general idea on the streaming gigs i mean i had fun doing the streaming gigs because for me it was it was better no show you know so uh, for for us meeting the band Having rehearsals, being on stage, we had a, a whole day in a, in a great venue that we could enjoy. So that was still very enjoyable for me. And I was watching actually a couple of live streams and I wasn't a big fan, you know, and I was like, what can we do better with our live stream? And I think the most awkward moment is when the band stops playing and all you hear is silence, you know. And we said right away, we don't want that on our live stream. That's why we kind of created a different atmosphere and all the intros and outros and little pieces we had from Destruction's history, we put into the live show that connected the songs with each other. So there's like, until the end, there's no silent moment in the live show where you could say like, oh, this is weird, you know, because that's, that's, that was my biggest problem about the live, live stream is that when the song is over, you're like, what the fuck? It's awkward. The silence. It's not normal, you know. And I think uh, that was the most difficult part of our live stream to to create this uh, cool atmosphere that people, when they watch it, they don't feel like 
it's weird. They feel like it's kind of normal. You know, of course the crowd is not there, but it's not like this awkward moment of silence where it's like, what am I doing here? <laughs> it didn't happen. What about uh, new music? Have you been writing something new during the pandemic? I mean, uh, Born to Paris came out in 2019. Yeah, for, for a long time I wasn't ready. Uh, and last year I didn't even try to think about a new album. But then beginning of this year, uh, I was like kind of motivated. After the live stream, basically, after I met the guys, I sat down starting writing new stuff. And uh, then in February, we started to do for the first demos and everything. And um, we've been to the studio ever since now. And uh, at, at this moment right now, I'm going to go to the studio tomorrow again to do the final mixes. So the new album will be done this summer, like end of August, the mix are done and we will also release a new single very soon. And uh, But the new album is coming beginning of next year. So uh, our label said right away, this year there's no more space for a new album. There's so many other bands coming this year, everybody pushed back. So, But we will release some singles this year, so the fans will know new album is coming soon. We have written a lot of great songs, I think. and. Uh, um, the first one will be out in about two or three weeks, yeah, on the 19th of uh, of this month. How is it to plan these things at the moment? I mean, things are looking better, but they are still very uncertain. Yeah, yeah. The, the problem is that when you can't tour, a new album is kind of not very good, you know, because uh, you want to present the new songs to the fans, you want to play them live. and. Uh, with Born to Perish, we could only do a European tour or two European tours, and that's it. We, we couldn't go to the States, to Asia, to South America, where we have the most fans. So it feels kind of weird that from the next the next tour, we have to basically show two albums to the crowd. You know, it's it's not just one; it's two albums we haven't presented yet. But on the other side, um, for me, once I was in the studio again or writing with the guys, uh, new songs, recording. You know, it felt like being a musician again, you know, that something we were missing the whole last year when the pandemic was at full force and, you know, started getting depressed about the future. Um, this year felt different. Uh, and I think the new album really had a, a big part of it for me that I could feel that, you know, we have to move on. You have to think positive, move forward, you know, hope dies last, stuff like this. And it was it was good, you know, so the new, new album really helped me to the pandemic and now we're going to have some first shows also we already had the first festival and uh, we're going to play six more now in august also coming to finland and uh, that's that's good of course you, you know you got to expect the unexpected but on the other side um, um we're trying to stay positive and look into the future we, we know that there's not going to be real tours not before next year you know this year will be spontaneous gigs we we, we try to play as much as possible but we don't expect full tours to happen this year. You mentioned the uh, uh, huge track list on the Live Attack uh, Blu-ray, and well, the band's career has uh, almost reached uh, 40 years. I guess it depends a bit how you count from if Night of Demons started in 82 or 83, or how do you want to count it, but... Uh... That's, that's a question. If you, if you count the band from the beginning, we formed Night of Demon and went into destruction in 82. In 83, the first demo came out. In 84, the first album. So if you want to see the first album as a first official release, then it's not 40 years yet. But if you want to count from the start, when, when we formed from from the heavy metal band into the thrash band, that was also end of 82. So basically next year is 40 years anniversary. What kind of thoughts and feelings does that bring? to think about the 40 years and uh, is there something special uh, planned for next year? It's a back pain to feel that old, you know, but uh, in the, at the end, uh, we would really like to do some special shows next year, uh, maybe some festival shows and see what's possible, invite some guests and make it, make it a nice anniversary next year. We have been talking about the, the live attack. So uh, how have your live performances changed from uh, uh, well, let's say, you know, from the first years? At the beginning, of course, when you're a young band, I mean, we were 17, I was 17 at the, the first shows, you know, so uh, there's a different perspective on things, you know, when you're young and you're wild and you don't give a fuck 
let's say the playing wasn't that good back then, but the head banging was intense, you know. <laughs> now the head banging is a little less because the neck is getting more stiff at age, you know, but uh, the playing is better. I mean, I think uh, basically it's still the same adrenaline when you go on shows, you know. I still have the same respect before a show. I, uh, I, I love it, you know. I always compare it, like some people have to go with bungee jumping or do like crazy sports. I, I can go on stage, gives me the adrenaline too, and it's, it's great fun. So uh, I still enjoy it as much as, as, as I did when I was young. I think when I was younger, actually, was, I was more afraid of shows. Now I can enjoy them more than when I was younger. The experience, it's like, it helps. We all, of course, know the German metal scene right now, but, uh, well, 80s was a different time. So uh, how was the metal scene back then in Germany? Yeah, it was exploding quick, and we didn't expect that, you know, because when we, you have to see our region, in our region, we were the first metalheads, Destruction and their friends, you know, so we formed the band, and that was the beginning of the metal scene in our region, and once uh, the band became a little bit more famous, and we went to bigger cities, and we saw we had fans that wanted to have autographs, and the first shows were sold out, we were like, what the fuck happened? You know, it was like kind of a, a dream. So everything was going very quick. The, the explosion was was intense. It was the underground was just rising, and uh, for us, we guys from the countryside, you know, we we didn't expect this to happen. Basically, we wanted to play and wanted to have a good time, and all of a sudden there was all these magazines writing about us, and we had a label deal, and it, it went very fast, actually. Maybe a little bit too fast because uh, then a lot of pressure came from the label, from the management, and and that's also when the band kind of broke up in the in the early 90s, you know, because of too much pressure. But uh, in the end, uh, the 80s were of course great. You know, there was uh, uh, there was more more women involved in the scene. You know, it was uh, it was the beginning of something new. You know, so it was exciting, and we were young and wild and. It was before HIV and, you know, everything everything was possible back in the day. 40 years uh, for a band, it's an amazing journey. So what for you are like the most memorable moments on the whole, whole run? I think it's those important points when you like meet bands that are your influence and you learn from them. Like to, uh, playing with Slayer in 85 on Hello Waits tour was a big benchmark because they taught they taught us a lot on that tour. You know, we were like very young and they were like a little older and already kill a live band at that time. And also then touring with Motorhead, we did like many tours with Motorhead in, in the later eighties. And Lemmy was a huge influence on me always. And uh, they treated us really nice. And there was some really great tours. It was also the tour with King Diamond and Motorhead when Mickey D met Lemmy the first time I was there, you know, that's like history was made, basically. And and I think also uh, those those years when we came back, uh, 2000, 1999, the first time you played Wacken again, uh, those were the, the moments when when you realize like, wow, this is so, this, this, this happens again, you know, we, we were so lucky. And, uh, and I think in the last years, uh, this Corona kind of thing will also be a, 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 a important benchmark when you look back. Like, how did we survive the Corona uh, season? You know, it, it's uh, it's going to be a hard fight for everybody. I mean, we we just saw that what happened to to Mike Howe from Metal Church. You know, he committed suicide. We all don't know if it's uh, Corona related, but but of course, it looks to me that it has to do something with Corona. You know, because he's been a very healthy guy, no drugs, no alcohol, very sporty. And uh, I understand that, uh, you know, this is a, definitely a challenge for, for all of us.